This is a wind-up cassette player, or to be more accurate, it's a hand-cranked cassette player because you never finish winding it up. It's powered by the crank. There are no batteries that get charged. The second you stop winding, it stops playing. The speed of playback is regulated though, so if you were to wind really fast, the tape should play at roughly the right speed. I say roughly, there's a bit of fluctuation, but if you were able to say wind it at five times the required speed, the tape should still play at approximately the right rate. On the other hand, if you were to wind too slowly, there's not enough power generated and the amplification circuitry cuts out. So it's the job of the cranker, for want of a better term, to maintain sufficient speed to keep the tape playing. The handle folds away neatly when it's no longer required, and while stopping the winding does stop the playback, you still need to press the stop button to retract the playback head from the cassette to enable it to be removed. You might have noticed that this is just a player. There's no record function, but of course there is rewind and fast forward. The crank never directly winds the tape mechanically. It's an electronic connection. For one thing, the handle is always rotated clockwise. It's the blue and yellow rewind and fast forward buttons that control the fast winding feature. And again, if you turn the handle too slowly, that winding feature will disengage. Thankfully, the machine doesn't have to be hand cranked. There is the option to plug in a regular power lead to run it from the mains. Alternatively, there's a DC socket into which an optional external battery pack could be attached. Alongside this is the connection for an external speaker or an earphone and a volume control. The tape machine plays back in mono only. Of course, both channels of audio are reproduced, but they're combined when playing back through either the speaker or via that external output. You most likely already figured out the role of this device from the text and logos that are present on the casing. But if you haven't, then this sticker on the base should make it clearer. Yes, this was intended for playing back religious recordings, something it could do in the most remote of places, irrespective of whether they had access to electricity. The machine seems to have been created for the Global Recordings Network, who, according to their website, have produced religious recordings in around 6,500 languages since 1939. Of course, this isn't the only device they used over the years. In the past, they distributed card talk records. I've shown a device like this in the past on the channel. I've got another one here that works in a similar way. It's just a needle attached to a piece of card, and when the record is turned by hand, it's acoustically amplified. The record of prayers that came with this one had a wider groove than your typical record, but unfortunately that's been mislaid. However, you can hear it working, albeit not as well, with this old show-and-tell record. And that, uh, could it be the work of the old lady's lawyer? Nonsense! Said the little old lady... Let's take a look inside to see how it works. When I was using it earlier, it felt like it was coming apart, and it turns out that all the screws that are supposed to hold it together are missing. However, there's still something holding it together, so rather than risk damaging anything, I downloaded the service manual, which is still hosted on the website. This document was last updated in 2004, but it's a real throwback to helpful service manuals of the past. I'd go further than that and say that this is the best written service manual that I've ever encountered. It talks the reader through every step of a repair process in a very clear way manner. Of course, given that the idea behind these players was to leave them in very remote places, if a repair was needed, it would most likely have to be carried out by someone with little to no prior experience. So let me just read this paragraph to you to get a feeling for how encouraging it is. It says, the novice or layman in the area of electronic repair should not be overawed by the apparent complexity of the service manual. This manual has been prepared with a non-expert in mind, and we trust that the instructions given will be clear enough for all to follow. Of course, originally this document would no doubt have been provided as a printed version, and it would accompany the player in the appropriate language for the area. Oh, and yes, of course, it told me what I needed to know in order to open the case. Right, so all five screws are out of the base, but it turns out I need to unscrew the handle. Now we have to unscrew it counterclockwise, so hopefully this is coming off now. Yeah, there we go. Easy enough, will not it? Right, so this now should open up. There we go, it's easy. Oh, good job I didn't fall sign to it. Let's have a look. Let's see what's in here. Okay, first thing, there's a little package down here. I suspect this might be the screws out of the base. Let's find out. Spare parts. Let's see what spare parts you get with it. When was the last time you opened something up and found spare parts inside? That's pretty impressive. Let's see what we've got. 
Well, this would make my job a lot easier if everything came like this, because inside here we have a drive belt, a generator belt, a washer, a screw, circuit board screw, motor plate screw. That is very impressive. Right, we've got a number of stamps and initials in here. Quite a few down there on the bottom. Yeah, six on there. That's quite a lot of people that have taken a look at this. Got a slightly loose belt, but it's still functioning. You can see it wobbles around a bit when the flywheel's spun. But it's functioning as it should do, so I'm not going to mess around with replacing it. Very solid little mechanism this. Okay, so the plastic handle travels down through the depth of the case via this metal drive shaft. That is connected up to this plastic toothed wheel at the bottom. So that is what we're turning. That in turn hits a toothed wheel over here, which then turns the larger plastic wheel in the opposite direction. Yeah, I thought that might be metal, but it's a plastic wheel. Now around this there's a belt, and if I just put a light on there, you'll be able to see it going off at the back corner there, underneath and around that golden pulley that is underneath this section with the blue tape on it, and that is our generator. So by turning this, we're turning the generator, and that's providing power, which is then going up through here to the motor, and the amplification circuitry. Alternatively, on here we've also got a transformer and that is just connected up to the power inputs on the back over here. Now the transformer bypasses the generator of course, the wires go past there and then directly into this just like a normal cassette deck with the power going in. Right, so I'm just putting a mark on this flywheel so you can see when it's moving because you'll notice when I turn this slowly, nothing's happening. So there's a system in here to determine when there's enough power going through and when it's sufficient, it will then power the motor and the amplifier. So I'll just increase the speed a bit here and you can see now the flywheel spinning around. Nice little system, very clever. And also it's very good for anyone that wants to learn about how these things operate. And finally, I just want to show you what happens when you put mains power into the socket on the back. It goes from the socket to the transformer to the right, bypassing the whole generator and system of gears. So here we go. And of course, when it's got power going into it, rewind and fast forward, take a lot less effort. This cassette player was intended to play recordings of speech, most likely readings of short passages with pauses in between during which an operator could stop and take a breather or wind down, as it were. The energy required to play a piece of music all the way through without stopping is not insignificant. It struck me that a real challenge of endurance would be trying to get a Spectrum game loaded in off a tape. I don't think I managed to get Jetpack loaded before the cramp set in, never mind a 1 to 8K game. The role of this cassette player was eventually replaced by a wind-up MP3 player, and that one had the advantage that it didn't have to be wound continuously in order for it to work. Although the MP3 player now also appears to have been discontinued, it had a much shorter run than the cassette player, and its role has been filled by, you guessed it, the ever-present mobile phone. Now, whilst this cassette player was never intended to play music, and you definitely wouldn't enjoy trying to get through the whole of Bohemian Rhapsody in one go, it's given me an idea as to how I would be able to provide some much-needed entertainment in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. It's always good to have a plan, although I think it will probably be scuppered by the effect of an EMP, so maybe I need to rethink it. But in the meantime, though, you can keep an eye out for me on my Coast to Coast Wind Up UK tour. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. Hey, blokes and Oi,